that's it. You just take it, set it, forget it. But none of us ever forget it because that first time you take metformin, like, I can't even explain. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to explain <laughs> what it was like for me. Hey guys, Mila Clark Buckley, the hangry woman here. And today we are talking about ways to help settle your stomach when you take metformin. Something we all go through when we start taking this medication. It's something we all hear about before we even get prescribed to this medication and it's uncomfortable. So I have some tips that have helped me in the past and that have just been really great. Before we get started, if you like videos about diabetes, be sure that you give this video a thumbs up and you subscribe. I love meeting new people with diabetes and just knowing that I'm not the only one living this out there. I personally have latent autoimmune diabetes in adults, which is a slow progressing form of type one diabetes. It was initially misdiagnosed as type two diabetes. So I don't find a lot of people like me out there, but in general, I just love meeting people with diabetes and just like, us all learning together and learning how to make the best of this kind of situation with our health. Also, if I sound kind of stuffy, I'm sorry. I have been getting over a cold and I just sound awful and hoarse and <laughs> stuffy and sick. So forgive my raspy, like gross, sick voice. Hopefully I'll get better soon, but the voice is what it is <laughs> at this point. All right, with all of that, let's dive in. So first I want to address what metformin actually does because that is always a question about what it is. People say that it helps insulin resistance, which is true. People say that it's a weight loss drug, which is not exactly true, but weight loss can be a side effect of taking metformin. There are all kinds of things said about it, but what metformin actually does is it decreases the production of glucose that's coming from the liver. So your liver sometimes will dump glucose into your bloodstream. Metformin stops that while also decreasing glucose absorption in the intestines. And then it also improves your insulin sensitivity. So if you're insulin resistant, like me, I have PCOS, so I have really terrible insulin resistance and sometimes like the insulin that I inject or the insulin the little bit of insulin that my body still makes like does not get used efficiently and when you have type 2 diabetes your body does not use insulin that you produce efficiently at all with its insulin resistance and so metformin really helps with that insulin sensitivity and helping your body absorb insulin more efficiently so that your blood sugars stay level. Metformin is usually kind of the first line of defense when you find out that you have diabetes. So for a lot of us, metformin was the first medication that our doctors tried for us rather than insulin or a semaglutide like Ozempic. I have a video, a few videos on Ozempic, what that does. I've been taking it for a while. It's been pretty good for me, but um, usually metformin is the first, the first type of medicine that you're prescribed. It's in pill form, so it's relatively easy to take, relatively easy to remember to take. You don't have to deal with needles. You don't have to deal with all these other supplies. You just, you know, take it once or twice daily depending on your prescription and depending on the dosage that your doctor determines for you. And then that's it. You just take it, set it, forget it. But none of us ever forget it because that first time you take metformin, like I can't even explain well, I guess I'm gonna have to explain <laughs> what it was like for me. But I started metformin about five years ago when I was diagnosed in 2016. Um, it was thought that I had type two diabetes. So my doctor said, let's put you on metformin. We know you have PCOS, so you have insulin resistance. Metformin's gonna help you. Let's go through that whole process. We did that the first day I took a metformin. First few hours, I felt fine. About 12 hours later, I was vomiting. My stomach had like the most terrible cramps I've ever had. I, I mean like, to be frank and TMI, it was coming out of both ends. Like it was not good for me. It just was, it made me never, ever, ever want to take this medication again. It felt like food poisoning. Like it just felt completely awful. And I was like, I can't do this. I don't want to do this. Like. I don't care if it helps, I don't wanna feel like this. And mind you, I had no warning about these side effects. I didn't know that this is what it was. I was just told like, 
you know, here's this pill, you're gonna take 500 milligrams once a day, you'll be great. No, it was not great. <laughs> it was one of the most awful experiences of my life. So getting that out of the way, I kind of learned ways to help it settle a little better in that initial stage. And I learned some of these tips from other people. I also learned some from my pharmacist, which was really great. And a lot of these did work after that initial first day when I felt completely awful. So I'm going to share what I've learned with you. Please always do consult your doctor if you have any questions about the medications that you're taking. I'm just sharing from my experience and hoping that it prompts you to ask questions and prompts you to get more information. But, you know, please don't take what I say as the golden rule. I'm just kind of sharing what worked for me and what kind of helps it settle, especially when you're in that first place in that first stage of taking metformin. So first things first, Take your metformin with food. It says this on the label of your metformin. Do not take this medication on an empty stomach. That's actually gonna make it worse. It's gonna agitate your stomach a lot worse. So be sure that you eat. Make sure that you eat first, give it some time to settle, and then you can take your medication. It just helps to coat the lining of your stomach and helps to ensure that like you're not getting that like big hit from the medication. Um, I always find taking it with food or like after, like right after I eat, maybe like 10, 15 minutes after I eat is always really helpful and helps it settle and I don't get those like crazy stomach gurgles anymore, which you don't want that, it's, it's fabulous. There is also an extended release version of metformin. So if you're currently on like the regular metformin, ask your doctor about the extended release formula of metformin to be put on that. What I really appreciate about extended release is that it does exactly what it says it does. So it extends the release of the medication. So you're not hit with all of that medication at once. It slowly absorbs into your system over time. So you're not getting that like initial kind of like gut punch when you take the medication. So if you're currently on like the regular version of metformin, I wanna say it's metformin HCL, it's okay to go ahead and ask your doctor if they can switch you over to the extended release version and that may ease some of your side effects, especially some of the GI side effects. And when I say GI, I mean gastrointestinal. I sometimes throw out acronyms and then I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> should explain what those are. Next up, do not skip doses of your medication. This is true for all medications. The more frequently and more regularly you take your medications, the better they're going to work. That's just how medications work. Sometimes you can forget. Sometimes you maybe go on vacation, you accidentally leave your pillbox at home, you go out to dinner and then you come home and you know, you forget to take your medication because you're so tired, you just go to sleep and forget to do it. Happens to all of us. It's, you know, not the biggest deal in the world. You want to make sure that you ask your doctor about how to catch up on that dose if you need to catch up on that dose or if you just go to the next one. Definitely depends on the medication. It's definitely a question for your doctor, but it happens. Skipped doses happen. But with metformin, it is really important that you take your medication consistently because skipped doses can bring on all of those side effects again. I have been there. I have skipped a couple of doses because of some of those reasons I've listed before. I either forgot, just slipped out of my brain and forgot to do it. I was out somewhere late and when I got home, I was tired, I went to bed, I woke up the next morning and was like, oh crap, I forgot to take my medicine. All kinds of these things can happen and you don't wanna skip those doses because it kind of like resets things for you and then you may feel those symptoms all over again. So be sure to be as consistent as possible with your medication. Take it with you if you have to take it with you. Do whatever you gotta do to make sure that you get those doses in every single day and you're doing it consistently so that those symptoms don't come back to you. I also have a natural nausea remedies video that you can check out. That is just a great one to have in your back pocket, but you can also use things like berberine um, that are going to help ease your nausea. So ask your doctor, like if you're taking it and you're noticing that after a couple weeks you are still experiencing these symptoms and it's still really bad and it's hard for you to even like make it through the day, ask your doctor what they can give you to help ease that nausea so that you don't have to deal with those symptoms. But there are some remedies like, 
ginger or peppermint. I love lemon water, like things like that, that kind of just like soothe and ease my stomach when I am having a stomach ache from some of my medications. And so those things work really well, but you can always ask your doctor for other solutions that can help with nausea. So you're, you're not having to go through that and deal with that in addition to having to deal with diabetes. And last thing is that your body will eventually get used to it. So those first few days, first few weeks probably feel like hell, but once your body gets used to the medication, you're not going to experience the same side effects and you just have to give it some time. And I know that that is really hard. There's, I don't think a single person in this world who has two weeks to just be at home and <laughs> like sit near the toilet to wait for these symptoms to subside. And that's why there are other options like nausea medications or, you know, whatever your doctor can give you to make that feel better. But just give it time because it does really help with that insulin resistance and with ensuring that your liver is not doing as much of that glucose dump into your system. But it also is a helpful diabetes tool even though it does have those really awful side effects and it seems like a lot of diabetes medications do like when I started taking Ozempic that was one thing that I noticed was that like I had gotten over those symptoms of metformin because I had been taking it so long and then when I started Ozempic it was like having that all over again and I was just like I cannot do this like I don't want to do this again why are all these medications like this and it's it's just the side effects like that's just kind of how it is and unfortunately these medications do help us but it kind of hurts <laughs> in the beginning it kind of sucks so hopefully these tips are tips that you can utilize in your first few weeks of taking metformin please do let me know in the comments down below if this was helpful to you and if this is something that you can utilize. I would love to know any other tips that you know about taking metformin and kind of easing those side effects for you. And what I love about this community like here on YouTube is that you guys always share your stories, you always share your other tips, you always fill in the gaps on things that I have missed or I haven't said in my videos and I love that so much. And so, you know, I always appreciate your feedback and I always appreciate you sharing what you know because it helps somebody else in the long run. You guys all read the comments all the time and comment to each other. And so it's really great to see, you know, everybody having that ability to want to share their knowledge about living with diabetes and helping other people to not have to go through this as badly because diabetes sucks and like taking the medication sucks, having to remember to take the medication sucks, paying for the medication sucks, going to the doctor sucks, it all sucks. Like there's not a single person in this world who's like, I love living with diabetes. Like if we didn't have to have it, we wouldn't have it. And so it's always helpful to know that there are these tools for us and things that we can use like this. And there's a community around us that can be really helpful to getting us the answers we need. Okay guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care of yourselves. Bye.